In this video, we are going to explore the four levels of measurement – nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. Each level gives us important information about the variable and supports different types of statistical analysis. By the end of this video, you will know what the levels of measurement are and especially you will understand why you need these levels. So whether you are analyzing survey data, optimizing business operations or studying for a statistics exam, stay tuned. What are levels of measurement? Levels of measurement refer to different ways that variables can be quantified or categorized. If you have a data set, then every variable in the data set corresponds to one of the four primary levels of measurement. These levels are nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. In practice, interval and ratio data are often used to perform the same analysis. Therefore, the term metric level is used to combine these two levels. Why do you need levels of measurement? The level of measurement is crucial in statistics for several key reasons. It tells us how our data can be collected, analyzed and interpreted. Here's why understanding these levels is so important. Different levels of measurement support different statistical analysis. For instance, mean and standard deviation are suitable for metric data. In some cases, it may be suitable for ordinal data, but only if you know how to interpret the results correctly. And it definitely makes no sense to calculate it for nominal data. The level of measurement also tells us which hypothesis tests are possible and determines the most effective type of data visualization. For example, bar charts are great for nominal data, while histograms are better suited for metric data. So each level provides different information and supports various types of statistical analysis. But attention, the level of measurement is mainly relevant at the end of the research process. However, the types of data to be collected and their format are determined at the beginning. Therefore, it is crucial to consider the level of measurement of the data from the start to ensure that the desired tests can be conducted at the end. So let's take a closer look at each level of measurement. What characterizes nominal variables? This is the most basic level of measurement. Nominal data can be categorized, but it is not possible to rank the categories in a meaningful way. Examples of nominal variables are gender with the categories male and female, types of animals with, for example, the categories dog, cat, bird, or preferred newspaper. In all these cases, you can tell whether one value corresponds to the other, so you can distinguish the values, but it is not possible to put the categories in a meaningful order. An example. We would like to investigate whether gender has an influence on the preferred newspaper. Both variables are nominal. So when we create a questionnaire, we simply list the possible answers for both variables. Since there is no meaningful order for nominal variables, it usually does not matter in which order the categories are listed in the questionnaire. Then we can display the collected data in a table where each row is a person with the respective answer. We can now use our data to create frequency tables or bar charts. But what about the ordinal level of measurement? Ordinal data can be categorized and in comparison with nominal data, it is possible to have a meaningful ranking of the categories. But differences between ranks do not have a mathematical meaning. This means the intervals between the data points are not necessarily equal. Examples of ordinal variables are all kinds of rankings like first, second, third, satisfaction ratings, very unsatisfied, unsatisfied, neutral, satisfied, very satisfied, and levels of education, high school, bachelor's, master's. In a questionnaire you could ask, how satisfied are you with your current job? In this case, we have these five possible options. The answers can be categorized and there is a logic order. 
That's why the variable satisfaction with the job is an ordinal variable. What about metric variables? Metric variables are the highest level of measurement. Metric data is like ordinal, but the intervals between values are equally spaced. This means that differences and sums can be formed meaningfully. Examples of metric variables are income, weight, age and electricity consumption. If you ask for a metric variable in a questionnaire, there is usually just an input field in which the person directly enters the value, for example, age or body weight. Let's look at what we've learned so far using an example. Imagine you're conducting a survey in a school to understand how pupils get to school. Here are questions you might ask, each corresponding to a different level of measurement. The first question could be, what mode of transportation do you use to get to school? Bus, car, bicycle, walk. This is of course a nominal variable. The answers can be categorized, but there is no meaningful order. This means that bus is not higher than bicycle, walk is not higher than car, and so on and so forth. If you want to analyze the results of this question, you can count how many students use each mode of transportation and present it in a bar chart. Further, you can ask how satisfied are you with your current mode of transportation. Choices might include very unsatisfied, unsatisfied, neutral, satisfied, very satisfied. This is of course an ordinal variable. You can rank the responses to see which mode of transportation ranks higher in satisfaction. But the exact difference between satisfied and very satisfied, for example, or other options, isn't quantifiable. And the last question, how many minutes does it take you to get to school? Minutes to get to school is a metric variable. Here you can calculate the average time to get to school and use all standard statistical measures. We can visualize this data with a histogram showing the distribution of time to get to school and compare the different transportation modes. So, using nominal data, we can categorize and count responses but cannot infer any order. Ordinal data allows us to rank responses but not to measure precise differences between ranks. Metric data enables us to measure exact differences between data points. As already mentioned, metric level of measurement can be further subdivided into interval scale and ratio scale. But what is the difference between interval and ratio level? Let's look at an example. In a marathon, of course, the time of the marathon runners is measured. Let's say the first one took two hours and the last one finished the marathon in six hours. Here we can say that the fastest runner was three times as fast as the slowest. Or to put it the other way around, the slowest one took three times as long as the fastest one. This is possible because there is a true zero point at the beginning of the marathon where all runners start from zero. In this case we have ratio level of measurement. If, however, the stopwatch is forgotten to start at the beginning of the race and only the differences are measured, starting from the fastest runner, we don't have this true zero. Now the runners cannot be put in proportion. In this case, we can say how big the interval between the runners is, for example, the fastest runner is four hours faster than the slowest runner, but we cannot say that the fastest runner was three times as fast as the slowest. This is because we don't know the absolute values for both runners. We still have equal intervals. We can say things like runner B finished one hour after the fastest runner and runner C finished one hour and 45 minutes after the fastest runner. The time differences are measurable and meaningful. But since there is no true zero point, we can say the fastest runner was x times as fast as the slowest runner. We only know how much later the other runners finished relative to the fastest runner, but not their total running times. And in this case we have an interval level of measurement. 
In summary, while both interval and ratio scales have equal intervals and support similar operations like addition and subtraction, ratio scales have a true zero point. Zero represents the absence of the quantity being measured. This allows meaningful multiplication and division. And now a little exercise to check whether everything is clear to you. First we have states of the US, which is a nominal level of measurement. This means the data is used for labeling or naming categories without any quantitative value. In this case the states are names with no inherent order or ranking. Next we have product ratings on a scale from 1 to 5. This is an example of ordinal data. Here the numbers do have an order or rank. 5 is better than 1, but the intervals between the ratings are not necessarily equal. Moving on to religious confession. Like the states, this is also nominal. The categories here, such as different religions, are for categorization and do not imply any order. Next we have CO2 emissions in the year, which is measured on a metric ratio scale. This level allows for the full range of mathematical operations, including meaningful ratios. Zero emissions mean no emissions at all. Then we have telephone numbers. Although telephone numbers are numeric, they are categorized as nominal. They are just identifiers with no numerical value for analysis. Care level of patients is another ordinal example. This might include levels such as low, medium and high care, which indicate an order, but not the exact difference between these levels. Living space in square meters is measured on a ratio scale. Like CO2 emissions, zero square meters mean there is no living space and comparisons like double or half are meaningful. Lastly, we have job satisfaction on a scale from 1 to 4. This is ordinal data. It ranks satisfaction levels, but the difference between each level isn't quantified. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like or subscribe and see you soon.